Hello, and welcome to Building Codes for Building Decks, an educational program covering every international residential code provision that affects deck design and construction. My name is Glenn Mathewson, and I'll be taking you through this class, Ledger Bolting Patterns. It's one class from the Structural Provisions 1 Ledgers and Lateral Loads series. So what's on deck for this class? First, we'll talk about what we did for ledger bolting patterns prior to the publishing of the 09 International Residential Code. Then we'll talk about the new provisions that were published in that 09 code. Next, we'll talk about the changes to those provisions in the 2012 IRC. And finally, solutions to the 2012 IRC. Remember, this class is only about the bolting pattern, as the provisions in 2012 are quite cumbersome. So first, let's look at a 2x10 ledger and how we used to bolt them to the houses on, on codes from 2006 and prior. Really, deck builders did have a standard. It was just not published. We put a bolt high, put a bolt low, put a bolt high, staggered them down the length of the joist, and it was usually one bolt every 16 inch on center, one between every joist bay. Some local or state jurisdictions may have written their own provisions, but it would have only been regional. The spacing between those was indeed governed by those local jurisdictions, and again, it was often just 16 inches on center. Then in the 2009 International Residential Code, a table was provided that allowed us to see how to properly bolt a ledger to a wood frame structure and know that it was done to code. A national standard was born. Under that code, there's a two inch no zone, no bolt zone, two inches in from the end of every ledger piece. That could be either at the end of the deck, at the edge, where the ledger ends, or it may be between two ledger pieces if you have a wide deck running down the length of a house. No bolts can be closer than two inches from the end. There's also the five inch no pass zone, where the first bolt placed must be no further than five inches from the end. And this left us with a 2 inch to 5 inch area from the end of the ledger to place the first bolt. That was likely already being done by most builders. The first bolt right inside of that first end joist. There was also a vertical control that was included in the 2009, stating that the bolts should be staggered high and low at a location 2 inches from the top and 2 inches from the bottom. That's what these black lines represent. So we would place our first bolt here followed by the next bolt, and followed by the next bolt, down the length of the ledger in accordance with the spacing. We're not going to talk about the spacing, as I said, in this class, as just the bolting patterns under 2012 will take the full 15 minutes. Where did the two inches come from? It makes sense. It came from joists spanning between two bearing locations. Under the International Residential Code, the top two inches and bottom two inches of a joist cannot be drilled, as these are the compression and tension cords that allow that joist to span. Anywhere in between you could drill your holes. Well, similar to the hole for a ledger bolt. This is what made it simple to put the two inch provisions in for the 2009 IRC. And then again, your spacing comes from the table, and we'll discuss that in a different class. Now we move to the 2012 IRC. So the first thing that was done is the hard two inches down from the top and two inches from the bottom was eliminated. And more of that no bolt zone was created. Simply saying the bolt didn't have to be right at that two inch mark, but it couldn't be within the two inches. However, there were some changes to the bottom location. That location dropped down to three quarters of an inch for your no drill zone. And that's due to the internal stresses that occur in the ledger. Let's talk about them. Here we have a ledger with our upper bolt and our lower bolt. Now, the lower upper bolt being about two inches down from the top. Remember, the ledger is loaded up with material, patio furniture, party goers, and just the weight of the deck itself. This is pushing the ledger into the bolt and thus pushing the bolt back up against the internal material of the ledger. If too close to the edge of the board, it will split, and it could even tear out the top edge of the ledger. This is why the 2 inch distance there was retained. However, at the bottom, the ledger is really just sitting on the bolt, whereas at the top, it's kind of like it's hanging from the bolt. Well, when you're just resting on the bolt, 
you don't risk tearing out any part of the ledger. So the three quarter inch was a, was re, it was reduced to three quarters. So I've gone back to the graphic now and let's take another look. We've shaded in the area in green where that first bolt is permitted to be located. The red shows a no bolt zone. The first vertical control is that of the distance between the bolts, the staggered bolts. They cannot be less than one and five eighths inches apart and not more than five inches apart. So we have to raise our lower control in this example up to the five inch line based on that upper bolts location. And let's raise our lower bolt as well. Now we look at the second vertical control. And this one is from the top of the joist down to the lower bolt. And these are minimum distances. A two by eight can be no less than five and a half inches from the top. However, there's an exception. If it's a two by eight on a two by eight band joist, it can be reduced to four and a half. For a two by 10 ledger, six and a half. And a two by 12, seven and a half. So we'll add in another control line, but this represents the highest that the bolt can go. So we'll fill in the allowable bolt zone in green as we did before. Let's pull away the label and just move our six and a half inch max minimum distance from the top over to the side. And we'll shade in the rest with red. Now, everything we have here represents the distances with the top, with the upper bolt being at the highest location. And this looks pretty simple. If we look at it, we're only about seven inches to the center of that bolt location and two and a half inches from the bottom. Now this really didn't change much from the 09 code, two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom. However, there's a little more to it. Let's take those labels away and let's put that green back in there. As indeed, we can get that lower bolt down to that three quarter inch from the bottom line. But what it takes is lowering the upper bolt. If we lower the upper bolt, it can go as low as one and five eighths above the lower bolts. But this means we can now lower the lower bolt as well, up to five inches less than the upper bolt, lower than the upper bolt. So there's a dual relationship, the relationship of the bolts together, as well as the lower bolt to the top of the ledger. Now we've established the entire acceptable bolting zone for this 2x10 ledger. We'll pull away our labels and we'll color it in in red and make it simple. Now let's take a look at the next piece. In 2012 concerns were also added to how we penetrate the band joist and where the bolts are located on the band joist. This causes a significant problem right at the start. We have to know the band joist to know how big it is, to know where the ends of it are, materials, and so forth. But this class reveals how simply the bolting pattern requirements are going to cause a condition where we have to visually verify that band joist, where it ends, how big is it. First, let's remember the band joist is fully supported along its bottom edge by the plate below. The same two inch rule applies to the ends. No bolts two inches from the end of any band joist piece. Most homes are going to have a segmented band joist running along a long line of the house. So you'll have to look at both sides of a joist to see if the grain changed, if the marking or material, some, some type of clue from one side of the joist to the other as the splice is at the end joist and from the inside would not be visible. Alas, determine where the ends of the joists are, the band joists, and stay two inches away. We also have the upper and lower limits for the tear out, just as we did for the ledger, but they are reversed. The forces are different. The ledger places forces on a bolt downward, and that bolt then places those forces downward on the, on the band joist. On the ledger, the bolt is pushing upward. So here we see our three quarters of an inch moves to the top, and our two inches moves to the bottom. And now we've established the drill zone and the no drill zone, for the band joist. We'll take a look again at the at the ledger and now let's overlay the two to see the interrelation and find where the two allowable bolt locations overlap as these will be the only places the lag bolts can be placed. I've dropped the ledger a quarter of an inch so that the decking is flush to the top. 
And here we can outline the area where the two acceptable boltings overlap. This is the bottom limit, which is based on the band joist. And this is the upper limit, which is driven by the ledger. You can see there's not much room in between. So if we wanted to drop the deck down, as many homes want a step outside their door, we're going to find very quickly the upper and lower limits meet. And we can only get a three-quarter inch step from the home down to the deck. This may not be acceptable to many, many homeowners, especially in regions with snowfall. So again, a 2 by 10 band joist on a 2 by 10 ledger will not yield more than a three-quarter inch step according to the provisions in the IRC. Let's go to the chalkboard and see how that affects numerous combinations of ledgers and band joists. Here I've listed every combination of 2 by 8 ledger and 2 by 10 band joist. Some of them are even a negative distance. Thus, there would be no way to structurally install the 2 by 8, 2 by 10 ledger on the 2 by 8 band joist or below the 2 by 12 on a 2 by 10. Let's take a look at this bottom one, the 2 by 12 ledger on the 2 by 12 band joist. We get one and three quarter inch step. I'm going to show this to you in a different orientation. This is looking at a section view of the rim joist ledger and you'll see the joist extending off to the right. Here's the no drill zone for the ledger and the no drill zone for the band joist. Here's where we'll place our upper bolt at the top to, at the highest it can go. And we'll look at our first vertical control stating that the lower bolt must be no less than seven and a half inches from the top. So this becomes a no bolt zone. However, there's another control which is no more than five inches from the bolt. And here lies our first problem. The minimum distance is lower than the maximum distance. Thus, we cannot put that first bolt where it's located. It would need to lower down so that the maximum from the bolt and the minimum from the top meet at the same line. At this time, we can now determine where that bolt can go. However, we would still like a step down from the deck. So let's take a look. The upper limit is here for the ledger and the lower limit is here for the band joist. This leaves only one and three quarter inch in between. If we lower the deck and lower the deck until the two limits meet, we find that we have a maximum one and three quarter inch step and we can go no further. Now, let me try to provide a solution to this. One idea would be to use a lower profile joist than the ledger installed. This would be compliant to the International Residential Code. In this example, a 2 by 8 joist is used with a 2 by 12 ledger and a 2 by 10, 12 band joist, and we can get a step up to 5 and 3 quarters of an inch. This is the greatest step I could get to derive using the IRC provisions. So we'll look at the final results on the chalkboard again. Here's what we had with the standard installation. If we use 2 by 6 joists with 2 by 8 ledgers, we can gain about 2 inches and get upwards of a 5 and 3 quarter inch step with that lower combination. If we use 2 by 8 joists with 2 by 12 and 2 by 10 ledgers, you'll see here in red the amount of increase we can get in our step, including the one at the bottom in the example we just gave, the 5 and 3 quarter inches. There's one last suggestion I'll make, and this is not code compliant, but let's look at it realistically. Here's that condition again of the 2x12 and 2x12 band joist and ledger, and the 2 inches you see at the bottom where the bolt can go no lower. Remember, we were concerned that we may tear out the bottom of the band joist. We have the force of the bolt pushing down on the band joist, but the band joist is completely supported along its length by the plate below, and the force of the house above is squishing those two together. Will we really tear out the bottom? Let's look at it this way. Here's our two inches. And what if we lowered that to one inch? Not code compliant, but perhaps worth exploring with the local building department. With that being fully supported at the bottom, this tear out is going to be pretty difficult with that plate supporting the bottom. This is not code compliant, but it is something worth considering to explore and see if structurally will work to get that step down from the door. This class has been provided to you, produced and narrated by Glenn Mathewson. 
I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will continue to pay attention to the changes occurring in the code for the decking industry. Thank you.